to chair interval training once again with me, Lynn Hardman. I'm wearing my mask because it's just best practice when we're out and about. But since I'm alone in my basement studio, thank you to our friends for allowing me to use it, uh, I'm going to take my mask off. But when you come to Yellow Springs, please wear yours. And hey, this episode of Epic Exercise is brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center. As always, consult your doctor before, before doing this or any exercise program. Uh, if you feel dizzy or a little out of balance, it's recommended that you remain seated in your sturdy chair and you can get plenty of exercise benefits there. All right, well, today we have a theme and the theme is team. Together, everyone achieves more. So, if we all wear our masks and we wash our hands a lot, and we start local, like Yellow Springs High School, who just had their commencement parade and a fabulous ceremony, yay team. And Yellow Springs, our local village community with excellent leadership. And of course, the state of Ohio with Governor Dwine, yay, and Dr. Amy Acton. We keep following this excellent leadership um, then maybe we can think local and act, I'm sorry, act local and make an impact globally. So I'm a big fan of team sports. I'm going to put my uh, mask away. We're going to get started with our exercise and let's just have a great workout. Yay team! <laughs> Here's some music for us. I'm going to be starting standing up, but you can remain in your chair for the entirety of the 60 minute or so class. Let me adjust that volume ever so slightly. So, please check your area, make sure it's safe, free of anything that you may slip, trip, or fall on. Go at your own pace and just start with an easy march. I suggest you stay behind your chair or off to the side so that you can use it as your balance check should you need it. But I'm going to come over to the side here and sometimes to the front so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. As we march, whether we're seated or standing, we want to use our best posture. Because the goal of this class is to make our movements easier. An elongated, strong, long spine makes all of our movements easier. It also makes it easier for us to breathe. So have fun and keep breathing and please stop or modify if anything hurts. We're gonna use some music from all over the world today. Mostly just rhythms. One of my favorite team tournaments is the World Cup. And my partner and I, we have flags from all over the world. <laughs> I think flags are beautiful, colorful. Alright, more on that later. Let's do a little bit of a wider stance. And just Sort of rock our bodies side to side. Flexing through your hips, knees, and ankles is a great way to warm up your lower body. And drawing your ear or your shoulder closer to your ear is a good start for our upper body warm up. Maybe roll that shoulder. See how that feels. You can always reduce the range of motion if anything doesn't feel good to you today. You can make it bigger if everything's working. How about reach across your body, pull your navel in, and introduce a slight rotation. Our spine can move in four different ways, unlike most of our other joints in our body. 
and rotation is one of them, but we want to take it easy. Okay, let's march it out. Another way our spine can work is it can it open or extend and close or flex. So try that as you breathe in, opening and closing. From the side, it looks like this. Good. And that sort of breathing is very important when we do our strength training. We never want to hold our breath. Good. The other way our spine can move is lateral flexion. We were doing that when we did that step touch. But if it feels good, you could reach a little higher over your head. If it doesn't, shorten those levers and soothe or protect your shoulders. Flexion, extension, rotation, lateral flexion. That's a lot of ways your spine can move. And the last way is a little translation. They kind of slide those vertebrae on top of one another. All right, I want to preview a couple little patterns we're going to use for our aerobic activity. And, and we're going to intersperse those, that's why it's called interval training, with some strength activities. So here's a preview of a balance pattern we will do. Very simply, it's called single, single, double. If we lift our knees, we're putting our foot back down on the ground a little bit slower than when we were marching, so we're balancing a little longer. To that, you want to have that chair in your hip pocket. Best posture, and you can swing through your opposite arm and keep that other hand on the chair. Or you can do both if you don't need the chair. Did I say single, single, double? Let's try that. Single, single, double. Two on one side, single, single, double. Did you see me wobble? I'm just getting warmed up here. I hope you are too. And I hope you're not afraid to use that chair. I like to say the only shame in assistive devices is when we don't use them when we needed them. Well, I'm feeling that on the tops of my thighs, so let's give it a rest. The other pattern I want to preview to you during this warm-up is called a cha-cha-cha, or a step out to the side. Step, and then one, two, three. Step. We're stepping, we're putting our weight into our left and our right foot equally, and our right and our left. Let's do it a little bit faster. Step and one, two, three. This pattern is more about agility and coordination. Now we're just getting warmed up, but later on we're going to do it even faster with just a step, step. Here's what it looks like. Kind of feels like skiing downhill. And we'll also just tap. So notice our body stays still when we're tapping. We're not putting weight in the foot. Got it? If you didn't, don't worry. We get to do it again. All right, we're going to transition to our chairs. If you're already there, super duper. If you aren't, take your time. Get your heels close to the legs of the chairs. Get your hips back. Keep your head up. Squat a few times if you like. We'll be working on strength later on, but let's get a sip of water. Every time you get anything down low, be mindful so that you don't hurt your back. I suggest, and the Silver Sneakers team suggests, stepping to the side, leaning to the side, supporting your spine with your arm and your braced abdominals. Okay, let's get a little dynamic seated stretch here. Dynamic is moving. And this is just preparatory, so we're not trying to go all out for flexibility, really ever. 
sitting tall and kind of near the edge of your seat. Let's stretch out our right leg and our left leg. And just to ingrain that pattern, let's try single, single, double. Single, single, now two on the right. Double. Let's do that a little faster. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. See if you can put that double up in the air. Show me the sole of your foot. Single, single, double. Four more. Three more. Pull the navel in. Stretch the crown of the head up. One more time, if you please. And you can always say, no, thank you. Settle that right heel down on the ground. Elongate, keeping your spine long and strong. Inhale up. Chin up. Lads and lassies. Stretch that arm out and lift your toes and fingers up. And down. Excellent. Let's try that left leg. Elongate the spine. Ah. Hinging halfway forward toward the lap. Lift the toes and the fingers, spreading them, and then lower. Oh, I forgot. I want to put this little stretch in here too. So pull your navel in, draw your knee towards your chest, and perhaps draw big flowy circles with your foot. Speaking of feet, I recommend good sturdy athletic shoes other direction with your circle. You really must wear good footwear designed for the activity. Let's get that other leg. If you are diabetic, it is very important. You can talk to your doctor, other direction. And I'm sure they'll, they'll uh, recommend the same. And you might even be able to get a prescription for diabetic shoes. Aha, that would be cool. All right, what else do we want to stretch? Let's walk our feet out. Get our inner thighs stretched out and our shoulders too with those knees pointing the same direction as the toes. Gently open the inner thighs and then roll one shoulder toward the front pocket and then back into the back pocket, so to speak, and then the other. Ah, that felt good. Let's walk those feet in. Take a nice deep breath and assess how we're feeling. We're going to use a scale from 1 to 10 to assess our intensity or any other feature factor of our exercise. 1 would be the bottom or the least intense of our assessment scale and 10 will be the top or the most intense. We don't want a 10. A 1 is okay because we're you know, at least we're alive and trying, but we're going to shoot for a four to a seven, perhaps an eight with our exercise. It's perceived exertion, so how you feel is right. If you feel like you're working too hard, you're right. Slow down or sit down. If you feel like you could exercise a little harder, you're right, but don't work too hard. You gotta save something for the next time. <laughs> All right. We're going to do this little aerobic pattern, which you can do in your chair for approximately 8 to 10 minutes, okay? Pull that navel in. If you're going to stand up, why don't you come on over to the left side of your chair and hold on. And if you're seated, best posture. If you're standing, best posture and lift those knees. Good. Now, when you're in the chair, sometimes these muscles get tired and you'll have to be creative and pull the heels back or stick the heels out, but just keep moving at your best and then take a rest when you need it. Let's try single, single now, double. If you're standing, make sure you can touch that chair for your balance check. Yeah, single, single, Double, so it works in the chair, but I'm gonna transition to the air. Y'all keep moving, please. I'm gonna come on over here so you can see what I'm doing. Let me 
get the beat. I got it. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. You've been doing this for a while while I was getting up. Let's change it. Let's do double, double, and four, three, two. Now we're really balancing. Double, double, and four, three, two, again. Double, got your chair, double. You can also put your toe down when you need, just tapping it. March it out, please. How are you doing on that scale of one to 10? We're really just getting started, but take a break whenever you need. You can always substitute this march. We're gonna change up from a knee lift to a little bit of a hamstring curl. So let's get our body feet in a nice wide position and start with a little triple flexion or mini squat. If you're in the chair, it's like posting up or riding a horse English style. Kick your heels up towards your hips. Stay where you're at. I'm gonna to come to the front or a little bit to the side so you can see what I'm doing. So you see what I'm doing? Drawing my heels up toward my hips, working on string curls. Let's try that single, single, double. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Whatever you want to do with your arms is cool, so long as it doesn't hurt. And you've got that chair where you can grab it should you need it. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. One more single, single, double. Now let's do double, 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 double. Now four, three, two. We're gonna add a little brain game. Now four, three, two, one. Double here. When we do the fours, I want you to think of the last four of your phone number. Double, sorry, double, four, three, two, one. And then when we go back, I want you to say it backwards. So here, I'll use my phone number. Double, double, here we go. Two, three, seven, nine, double, Double, and nine, seven, three, two. You try it, double. Just on the fours. Here we go. Was that your phone number? Double, double, backward. Good, try your best friend's phone number of the last four this time. Three, three, oh, two, Double. Now backwards. Two. Oh. Three. Three. March it out. Did you get that little brain game? It wasn't my smoothest, but we got some good cardio. And we're going to keep going, but I want to ask you, how are you doing? Can you talk? Keep your body moving? I hope so. If not, really get somebody's attention. Sit right down. But we're going to do this one more time. And we're gonna get some hip exercise while we do that. Single, single, double. You ready? And then we'll transition to double, double, and fours. Widen out your stance to about a hip width. Make sure you touch that chair. And we're gonna do hip abduction after we do this little mini squat. Good. Got those thighs and hips pumping. Hips out. Double. Pull your navel in. Double. 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 I messed that up, didn't I? Double. 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 One more time. March it out. Did you feel that in your hips? I bet you did. I did. How about, how do you feel about doing that one more time with double, double, 
four. If not, you can just march it out or have a seat. It's only going to take a minute. Best posture. Little mini squat. Down. Ready? Double up. Up. Other side up. Now, four, three, two. Dorsal flex that leg. Double. Double. This is hard. Four, three, two. One more set each side. Good. Four on the right. Woo, this is hard. Double. Four on the left. Woo, I'm starting to get a little momentary muscular fatigue. I think I need to stretch those strong hip muscles and have a seat. So that worked the sides of the hips. But we need to work the backs of the hips and the quadriceps and the inner thighs and the hamstrings when we squat. Be careful, take your time as you transition to your chair. Keep your chin up, pull your navel in, get your tailbone back. Hinge as low as you comfortably can and then power up. As you go back, your tailbone goes back. As you come up, tuck it under and squeeze your cheeks together to get maximal recruitment of your gluteus maximus. Everybody wants the biggest bang for their buck. I mean, buck. <laughs> we love to say that on TV. <laughs> All right, get settled in your chair for the more. Take your time to get a sip of water. That was a little bit of work, wasn't it? We're still going to work, but we're going to work on strength now. You're going to need your ball for this one. If you don't have a ball, you can use a big pillow. Not so big that it wouldn't fit right between your thighs above the knees. Anything somewhat cushy would work that keeps your knees from knocking. Sit up the edge of your chair and let's strengthen the inner thighs. Sitting tall, squeeze and release. Each time you squeeze, exhale, inhale, exhale. This is a progression that's going to go pretty challenging up a ladder. I want you to decide at which point on the ladder of progression you feel like any further is not good for you. Okay? Let's add on. We're going to push our heels into the ground while we squeeze with those inner thighs. Now we're using our hamstrings. Lift your toes up and you're strengthening your shin muscles. Very important for our walking gait. Breathe each time. Adding on, I want you to think of squeezing your cheeks together. Sometimes I hear the uh, choir director at the Methodist Church here in town suggest that you support your voice by squeezing a dime between your cheeks. <laughs> That's the kind of feeling I want you to get. Okay, adding on, we're going to use the heels of our hands push into the chair and pay attention if it hurts. Stop. Okay? But squeeze the ball, drive the heels down, lift the toes up, squeeze your gluteal cheeks together and push. When we push into the chair, we're strengthening our triceps, the shoulder stabilizers, and a little bit of the chest. Now, if you're not having any pain, we're going to finish this ladder progression with a glute bridge. Swinging our hips up. Breathe. This is a whole body exercise. Do your best and then rest. Maybe two more if you can. Woo-wee! That's hard. I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I got to an 8. Remember, if you need to stop, you're right. Just take a break. But 
we're going to focus on these abdominals now. Um, I want, actually, yeah, let's do our abdominals. Sitting at the edge of our seat with our feet together. Tuck your tailbone under and pull your navel in like you're zipping up your tightest pants. Lean back and kind of gently tuck your chin as if you were going to hold a navel orange or a juicy fruit under your chin. And lean back. Ooh. Maybe you touch your shoulder blades to the chair and then slide forward. So these abdominal slides, I want you to stay where you're at. Are working your rectus abdominis or your core, your abdominals. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Keep working. So we're tucking that tailbone under, tucking the chin. If you want to make it harder, you can hold the ball closer to your chest. If you want to make it harder, you can hold the ball over your head like you're doing a soccer throw in. You could try to touch, or you're not going to need to touch your toe, but just lift one leg. Pull that navel in. Do these abdominal slides at whatever place works best for you. Maybe you can just push that ball out. And do them until you feel like you cannot do them safely, comfortably, in good form anymore. I'm going to try for four more. Three. Ooh, these are challenging. Two. One. Wow, that was hard work. Okay, let's see where we're at. Mm, do I want to do one more exercise for this ball? Let's try a game. I love ball games, especially team games, because whew, it's just fun for me, and I like working together with other people. So. I'm going to pretend that I'm looking forward towards the home plate. And I'm an outfielder, so the ball's going to come through the air, and I'm watching home plate. I'm keeping my eyes right there. The ball goes up in the air, and then I have to look at it. But don't look at it until you need to. The ball goes up in the air, then you can look at it. Can you catch it fine? Let's add a challenge. Let's only look straight ahead at that one point and see if we can use our peripheral vision and throw that ball a little higher so it actually leaves our range of peripheral vision and sometimes our eyes will cheat and look directly at the object. And that's very typical because we're very visually dominant. So we're working on exercising our peripheral vision. You can try one hand to the other. Don't look directly at the ball. If it gets away from you, I'll know you've been challenging yourself aptly. What do they test every time you get your driver's license renewed? Peripheral vision and reaction time with that little flashing light because it's very important for your activities of daily living. Tuck that ball away. Let's do a little flamenco breath. Inhale up and down. Oh, sorry, I had a little dance attack. <laughs> I told you I was using music from all over the world. But hey, it's time to do another pattern. And this one's about agility. Step out to the side and one, two, three. Step out to the other side, one, two, three. Remember I previewed it in the warm up? Okay, so if you'd like, take your time and get behind your chair or remain in your chair, but wherever you're at, do your best, best posture, breathe, have fun. I'm gonna get up. Remember we're stepping. 
That means we're putting our weight equal into both feet. We're putting all of our weight here. Step out slow to the right. And one, two, three. Slow to the left. One, two, three. Mini or medium squat if you like. That's cool. One, two, three. Step. And this is slow. Good. Let's do one more set. Right and left slow. By the way, you can continue at whatever pace you like. But let's try tempo now. Step out. One, two, three. Fast feet. Research shows if we work on agility patterns, it reduces our risk of falls. And any aerobic activity that gets our heart and our lungs working together for 10 or so minutes is also going to improve our cognitive function. Yeehaw! Do this to the best of your ability. You can do it little, but step on it. Good. Let's do one more at tempo, and then we're going to try it fast with a step, step. Here we go. Step, step. Mini squat, mini squat. Chin up or heads up. Good. That's out of rhythm. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. 
Good. Now, let's try floating that foot and balancing for a moment. Woo. Stretch the crown of your head up. Keep a hand near your chair. How you doing? Slow it down even more. Hold it out there and one, two, three. Float to the left and one, two, three. How you doing? Got your chair. One, two, three. Woo! One, two, three. Balance. One, two, three. Balance. One, two, three. March it out. Woo! That was a nice little interval of gentle aerobic activity. Time to transition to our last set of strength for today. Starting with you know what? Squats. Keep your chin up. Get your hips back and just hover. That's a great way. Remember, tailbone goes back while your shoulders stay up. And when you come up, your tailbone tucks under and you really got to Recruit the glutes. Squatting is one of the number one exercises that's highly correlated with independent living. Now, if you can't do squats because of some lower body um, challenge, you could just be in your chair and pretend that you're going to get up. Digging your heels in and just sort of Pushing the whole foot, both feet, ten toes and heels into the ground. And that will also strengthen your hips and your thighs. But now it's time for a little sip of water. So make sure you're taking your time, protecting your spine with that strong brace and a brace on your lap as well. Okay, we already used our ball. We're going to use our, our rubber band. You can use a latex or even a non-latex band like this that you may have from maybe some rehab therapy, but I like to do prehab. Or maybe you've got one of these rubber tubes, okay, with the handles. Or even without. All of that will work. I brought them all because I just like the colors. <laughs> okay, we're going to work on, this is a different exercise. We're, I'm going to call it the archer. Take both of the two handles in your left hand. We're going to imagine a target off to the left. Normally I do this facing forward, but let's turn our body sideways in our chair. And get that right leg back, kind of like we do when we get um, one of those stretches. But you can either keep the toe tucked under on the right foot, or put the foot flat on the floor if it bothers your metatarsal or your big toe joint. Hold that left arm out, point it towards the target. Let the crown head go up. Keep the left arm straight from the wrist to the shoulder, shoulders down. Grab the two and draw back your bow like an archer. Breathe. Think of squeezing the shoulder blades together behind you. Keep the level of your, of your left hand a little below your chin in case you lose the grip. It doesn't snap back hit you in the face. Now, big option here. If you feel sturdy and safe, you could try a lunge with that. This is a big option. Keep your focus. You can sit down whenever you want to or do four more from your chair. Breathe. Three. Stop when you want to. Two. One. Wow! That worked the tricep and the rear deltoids of this left arm, and it worked the rear deltoids and the bicep of this right arm, as well as a lot of legs. 
We're going to do the other side, but let's take a little break here and do some hip abduction. Holding the tube, sitting at the edge of your chair. Go ahead and step on it. If you want, while you're sitting tall, slide your right foot out, keeping the knee from bowing inward. You don't want that. That relaxes the hips. Try it on the left. That tube is right under the skinniest part of your arch of your shoe. If you want more resistance, crisscross the tubes. Put a little tension on it. Sit tall and try it again. Sit tall. Keep your body tall and strong. Oh, dear. This means it's, we're slowing down. Actually, we're right on time. Let's try that single, single, double pattern here. So right, left, and double. Right, left, and then two on the right. Good, let's try that again. Left, right, that's a little brain game. Two on the left. Now let's try two on the right. Two, two on the left. This is why I'm going to get more reps in. Four on the right. Four, three, breathe each time. And two on the left, two. Breathing, two on the right, two. Keep those knees from knocking. Finish off with four strong on the left. Feel that. Make sure you remove the tension on your tube. And we're going to repeat that archer exercise. This time both handles are in the right hand. Turning our body to face the right side. Kind of that left tip is just off of the edge. Getting that toe back tucked under. Or if that hurts, you can put the foot flat. Your choice. Right fist below the level of your chin, nice and straight from the wrist all the way to the shoulder. If you want more resistance, you grab closer to that right fist. Less, you draw, you grab it further away. But squeeze those shoulder blades together behind you and breathe. And if you want this really super hard option, you add that lunge. Or over our chair in case we lost our balance. Do your best. Maybe four more, whether you're lunging or in your chair. Three. Two. Ooh, I could feel that. We're done with our tube, so go ahead and hang it up. Let's get a little sip of water. Be mindful. Nice and slow. Pull the navel in. Here's to my dream team. Okay. We're going to do some stretches. I love some stretches. Go ahead and sit kind of near the edge of your chair. And remember we did this seated hamstring stretch in the beginning when we were just warming up. Now that our body is a little bit more warm, the muscles are a little more elastic. We want to be careful with our stretches, not to go too far. But notice Anytime you do a good little bit of exercise, supporting your body on that left lap, bracing, you immediately, from your movements, become more flexible. This is a great thing. Inhale, let that right arm rest somewhere down on the right leg. Take a nice deep breath through your nose if you can. Stretch your back nice and long. Really think of lifting your tailbone behind you. 
and lift the toes up towards the ceiling. Some of you might be able to comfortably grab your toes. If not, you don't get any special awards <laughs> for having the right amount of limb lengths and flexibility. We're all made just perfectly. So don't push your limits. Let's try that. That up. Left leg supporting on the right, pulling the navel in, breathe deep. Again, if the shoulder doesn't like to be extended, shorten it, soothe it, listen to your body. We can stretch our limits a little. And we can challenge, but if we push too hard, we're going to go back two steps or injure ourselves. Lift those toes. Actually, let that left arm rest. And sort of stretch your tailbone back and your crown of your head forward on the diagonal. Give it some time. Good. All right. Let's try our figure four stretch, which is a great external hip rotator. You have to be near the edge of your chair, crossing your ankle over your ankle, and letting the right knee drift down like the pages of a book opening. For those of you who are more flexible, you might be able to comfortably stack your ankle on top of the left thigh, and then gently coax that right knee down, and you'll feel a stretch. If not, whether you're crossed at the ankles, or at the lap, hinge forward, reach the tailbone back, get comfortable with it, and take a couple deep breaths to let the stretch develop. You can coax the outside of that right knee down, but don't force it. Now let's try the other side. Now one hip might be tighter than the other, so try it at the ankles crossed first. See how that feels as you hinge forward. Gently letting the outside of the left knee drift down. Or perhaps you're more flexible and this feels fine. But give it time. Deep inhale. both feet on the ground. Let's take a nice deep breath. Hands in front of you. Extend and as you breathe in, open your palms, spread your fingers, open your chest, lift your heart, opening your spine a bit. And when you're ready to exhale, bringing those shoulders and hands together, interlacing the fingers and pushing out. Drawing the tailbone down, drawing the chin toward your chest. Mm. Let's take another deep breath and focus on the neck and the trapezius muscles a little. Find a place where you can comfortably just latch the fingers on your chair. Take another deep inhale when you're ready, and as you do, lean forward like like a fuselage of an aircraft ready to take off. Feel the gentle stretch, drawing your shoulders down, and when you're ready to exhale, you can let the right ear drop down toward your right shoulder. Stay here and enjoy a deep breath. Let's breathe in in this forward leaning position one more time, finding the length and strength in our spine with that deep inhale. And then when you're ready to exhale, let your left ear drift down toward your left shoulder. Deep breath. Feel the stretch develop. Just up 
above your collarbone and shoulders. Let's just do very slow, gentle head movements. So we already let our right ear drift down. So let's draw a half circle very slowly, letting the head roll, chin toward the chest, and slowly, slowly end up with the left ear over the left shoulder. Take a deep breath, stay here and lengthen your spine. Again, remember the movement's just up above the collarbone. And let the head roll, this time stop in the middle. Just let the weight of your head lengthen the back of your neck. Take a deep breath. Kind of guide into the back of your neck to do a little self-massage there. And finish your half circle back to your right shoulder. Sit tall. Let's get these quadriceps and hip flexors and the sides of our body stretched. I have a clock on the wall over there that I keep track of time and the battery died, so I'm not really sure exactly where we are with, <laughs> with our one hour show. <laughs> All right, let that left knee drift down. I think we got about five more minutes, so let's enjoy. Deep breath. Lifting your heart. If the shoulder doesn't like that extension, you can enjoy this stretch with a gentle arch to open your spine. If your spine likes to be perfectly vertical, listen to your body. You're right. Exhale when you're ready. Lean toward your chair back. Let that elbow hinge a bit and draw your fingers to right between the tops of your shoulder blades to stretch the muscles we worked when we did our archer, the triceps. Give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. Ease out of that. And let's do the other side. Take your time. Get comfy. Remember, if tucking the toe under doesn't work for you, you can let the toe drift back. You can hinge forward to ease that leg back. To get your full, safe, comfortable opening on the quadricep, that long, strong group of muscles, and the hip flexors, inhaling up. chest and spine a bit. When you're ready, exhale and lean towards your chair. Stretching through this right side of your torso. Deep belly breath. And let that elbow hinge. Fingers reaching toward the tops of the middle of your shoulder blades. And enjoy a tricep stretch. Let's get a pat yourself on the back. You did a great job today. I hope. <laughs> I trust you. Hey, so at the top of the hour, I told you that, wait, let's, I got excited. Let's just take two or three minutes to do nothing but notice our breathing and relaxing. Scooch back, get comfy in your seat there, supporting your spine and resting the weight of your arms with your hands near your lap or just at the side. And bring your attention to below your collarbone. Maybe focus on your heart today. Breathe in ideally through your nose. from the bottom to the top and exhale as if you're blowing out a candle. Effortless
this breath. Know that when you inhale, that fresh oxygen, that life-giving energy enters your lungs, is transferred by the miracle of life into your heart. Feel your heart pump that beautiful energy to the tips of your toes and your fingers. Every exhale, releasing tension, whether it be in your body, mind, or spirit. And every inhale, a refreshing, energizing influx of fresh oxygen. to immunize everyone against the coronavirus. So, well, the ball, the information will move a lot faster than if just one country or one person carries it up the field, right? So, I'm gonna pass from USA all my information over to China, and China's gonna then pass it to Italy, and Italy to Brazil, and Brazil to Germany, and then, and then Germany to India, and then India to South Korea, and South Korea's gonna kick it back to South Africa, and then to New Zealand and England, and eventually, all together, goal! <laughs> anyway, together, everyone achieves more. Yay, team! Keep it safe and simple until our next epic exercise episode. <laughs> Bye for now.